It took me a while thinking about it, but I think I know why it works. But it's beyond uh, conservation of momentum. Uh, so we have linear conservation momentum. What do we do with conservation momentum? <laughs> what religion? Velocity. <laughs> Masses, velocities, collisions. Uh, we have linear conservation momentum if we have two things coming together and they stuck together. Or whenever you have a collision, you're going to have conservation momentum. Uh, impulse momentum, net problems. Uh, we had the coefficient of restitution, which we're not going to cover. It also holds for uh, conservation or momentum equation. That would be your other equation. But we're not going to talk about that. Okay. We're going to look at angular momentum uh, this time. Let's do the start off with the quiz. Remember we're on TV. So if no external impulse is acting on a body, what is conserved? Uh, no moments 
Uh, angular momentum is conserved. What's special about moments that's not about forces? Why do we like moments better than forces? Because you can cancel out. You can cancel out what? The moments? No. Some of the moments. Reaction forces. You can pick your point where you're taking the moments about, about your reaction forces to cancel those out of the equation. And so some of the moments about G is always conserved if there is no external moments. And also, angular momentum about a certain point P is also going to be conserved. So how do we do this? We establish an inertial frame of reference. What is inertial frame of reference? It doesn't accelerate. Constant velocity is also an inertial frame of reference. I used to think that when I was a real small kid that if you're in an airplane and you're flying, jump at the front of the plane and then zoom to the back of the plane. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> Which is good, because I wouldn't want to be splattered against the back of the plane. Why doesn't it work? Because you're moving at the same velocity as the plane, so when you jump up, you're still... Hey, what about the, the elevator falling if you jump last second? You have to jump further than the speed of the elevator, which... Oh, yeah, if you're going up and then like, you jump, you're not going to stop. Anyways, you can jump a lot. Anyways, you can concentration of linear momentum, uh, angular momentum. Basically, you want to establish your uh, before impulses after to uh, figure out where's a good place to go. We may have to use kinematics for the bright light. All right. So here we have, what do we have? We have a wheel, and the re wheel is running against the speed bump. What could happen? It can stop or it could bounce over. Right? So if you're going really slow, it's going to stop. And if you're going fast enough, what's going to happen? It's going to bounce, and it's going to roll up, and it's going to roll over. So. How would we solve this problem? So we have a, a mass of the wheel and an IG of the wheel. We're rolling without slipping. Doesn't rebound. What does doesn't rebound mean? It doesn't go back. It doesn't bounce upwards as we're going over the bump. The, when it hits point A, it's going to stick. It's not going to bounce off point A. And so uh, we can, it goes from rotating about the ground to rotating about point A is basically what's happening. Uh, so how fast do we need to be going to just roll over obstruction a day? <laughs> just roll over obstruction a day. So what does just roll over the obstruction at A mean? It is point A, but it could, have good, could go to point A and then fall back down. So it goes, it, it just rotates over when it's at the top, its velocity is zero, and then a little bug comes and lands on it. And just a little bit extra forcing, then it's going to go over the end. All right. So, how do we deal with the problem? Probably impulse momentum, because that's what we're talking about. Uh, but also we're going up and down. Going up and down gives us what? Potential energy. Right? So we have a collision, and whenever you see a collision, we're going to use impulse momentum. But then we have a change in height, so we have work energy. So it's going to be a combination of the two. Unfortunately, when you get to the end of the semester, you have combined problems. On the final, I don't tell you what method you need to use. You need to listen to the problem and say what the problem is telling you. When we have a collision, it's always going to be work energy. If we have a change in height, sorry, collision is impulse momentum. Change in height is work energy. So what's our plan? Uh, no slipping, so we're pivoting about point A. Uh, and we have a short impulse so we can neglect gravity. Because uh, the force, because of the collision, is going to be much larger. Uh, then we basically can do conservation of angular momentum about A, and then we need to apply work energy after that. My guess is 
plus, oh, so my, you're right, negative i omega 1, because positive we're doing counterclockwise, so it's minus i omega 1 plus, or minus m v g times the distance, which is 0 0.2 minus 0 0.03. Because this is uh, counterclockwise is positive, so bow point A, this is going to rotate clockwise. Oh, okay. right, the mo if this was a force, then the moment would be clockwise, and so it's negative. Okay. Okay. And then this is going to be equal because angular momentum is conserved. What's it equal to? I omega 2 negative plus or minus m v g 2 times what? 0 0.2. Because here it's rotating perpendicular, where here it's rotating at this distance, only this distance right there. Okay. What are we looking for? VG. So now we need to write our omegas in terms of VG. So what's omega 1? V over R. So we have minus I times VG over R minus M times VG times what? 0 0.17 meters. <laughs> is equal to, what do we have? This is minus I V G 2 over R plus or minus M V G 2 times 0 0.2 meters. So once we know this, we can figure out the relationship between the initial velocity, Vg, and Vg2. So that's the angular momentum conserved, and now what happens? So now we have another change. In the end, we have what? We're now at the top, 0 0.03, 0 0.03. We've moved up 0 0.03 meters. And what else do we know? V equals 0. Just <laughs> making it over. Right, and so between here and here, what's happening? We're going from kinetic to potential, so we have conservation of energy. So what is our energy here? One half mvg2 squared plus the center of mass is moving, so we have a 1 half mv squared. Plus we're rotating, so we have 1 half i times omega 2 squared. This is going to be equal to what? Mgh. Equal to mgh. How much the center raised? Oh, okay, so it's still So it's this was raised 0.3, so the center is also raised 0.3. And so this is equal to putting some numbers. What is the number? Oh, we have I. So in numbers, mass was 
n k g, and then what did I use for g? 9.81. Uh, H is 0 0.03 meters. This is equal to, well, what are we looking for? VG2? So omega 2 is what? VG2 over R. So we have VG2 over R squared times I, which is 0 0.156 kg meters squared times 1 half plus vg2 squared times our mass, which is 10 kg times a half. So from here we can get that vg2 equals, I believe it's 0 0.651 meters per second. Art is what? 0 0.2. 0 0.2. So now we know VG2. So we can put numbers back in here. So we're going to get what? V, every, all the minuses are going to cancel out. So we're going to get VG times I, which is 0 0.156 kg meters squared over 0 0.2 meters. Uh, plus our M was 10 kg times uh, VG is factored out uh, 0 0.17 meters. That's going to equal uh, 0 0.156 kg meters squared over 0 0.12 meters uh, plus 10 kg of 0 0.2 meters, and all of that is times VG2, which is 0 0.61651 meters per second. And so from here, we get that VG is 0 0.729. So again, we, we broke it into two parts. How did we know we had to break it into two parts? No, it, the, the question was, what's the initial velocity to find the change in height? So the hint for two things is we had a collision, and we also had a change in height. So in a change in height, that would be a force times distance or an energy. Uh, and we're only dealing with velocities. So that's, so that's sort of the hint we get uh, to know we have a two-part problem rather than just a one-part problem. There's a picture of the sun. Uh, slender rod mass M is at rest. A bullet of mass M is fired with a velocity VB. The angular momentum of the bullet just before impact is...
how is it 112 to uh, the i about the n is 130. Okay. And it goes 112 plus 1 fourth is 1 third. 112 plus 3 12 is 4 12, which is 1 third. So, we, so if you combine these two, then you would have 1 third m uh, omega. Oh, I see. That's just the parallax. Let's see yeah, it's the parallax is here is what it works out to be. All right, yo-yo. That's great. 200 gram yo-yo treated the disc with R is equal to 0 0.13. We're throwing down, this is going into yo-yo skills. Because 
It's magic because this force passes through the joint. It just messes with their mind too much so that so we can visualize. Right? What's your angular momentum? It's I omega plus mass times velocity times the distance. And the distance here is the same as the distance down here. Yeah. It's the same as the distance down here. So it works no matter where you do it. It just messes with your mind. And so we don't want to do that too much. We'll just use this distance right here. Uh, so this is point A. So angular momentum. is conserved about A. So our initial angular, moment, initial angular momentum is what? Mass V1. This is your linear momentum times 2 thirds R. Right? Because this is at a this is at a distance of 2 thirds R and this is going to be going to rotate this way, which is negative. You're right, it's negative. Why do I follow my drawing? I need to flip it on the other side. And then Doubt it us. So we pause it. This is equal to, again, we're doing it about A. So it's NV2 times R plus I omega 2. And this is R 2 thirds R, two thirds R, and both of these are negative. Okay, so now we have an equation, now we need to use kinematics to relate omega 2 and V2, which is pretty easy. What Omega 2 is equal to what? V2 over 2 thirds R. Because V is equal to R omega, but the R is the distance of the point of in question and the point of zero velocity. Because we have a string, we're assuming my string isn't going up and down. Uh, and so that's going to be V2 over 2 thirds R. And I, what was I? Treat as a disk, which means what? It's one half m r squared for a disk. And so what we have with the mass is going to cancel. So what do we get? R's cancel? Some of them. Some of them. No, 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 no. Yeah, it, you know, that's, 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 that's too much. We're going to have V2 times what? 2R over 3 plus 1 half R squared over 2R over 3. And they're all neg negative. So we'll make it all positive. And this is equal to V1 times 2 thirds R. And so basically you can solve that V2 over V1 is equal to
that mean? So 40% of the velocity is lost. Whereas the velocity after, after the collision is 47% oh, of the velocity before the collision. It's just going half as fast. 53% was lost. 53% was lost of the velocity. It is rotating, so it's not 53%. It's not that squared as the energy, because we have rotational energy as well. Thank you. 